are still entering, but I'd just like to welcome you this morning. My name is Dr. Christian Wood. I am a literacy faculty member in the School of Education and have the honor to serve as the chair of the Virginia Hansen Committee. On behalf of the Virginia Hansen Committee, the School of Education, Arts Equals Opportunity, and the San Marcos Writing Project, I would like to welcome you to our event today. Today we have, oops, sorry about that. My production skills are still getting honed. Um, today we have um, Alex Owens and some other guests with us today. He is the co-director of Be Loud Studios in New Orleans. So we'd like to welcome him today. And um, I, we have a couple sponsors for, of today's event that I'd like to tell you about. Um, our first sponsor is the Virginia Hansen Endowment Fund and the Curriculum Committee. Um, this is Virginia Hansen, and Virginia Hansen dedicated her life to being the best teacher possible for the children in her care. As a cooperating teacher, she helped numerous students hone their skills. And in 1998, the Virginia Hansen Endowment Fund was established in the CSUSM School of Education through the generosity of Mr. Victor Hansen. It's intended to honor the work and memory of his wife, Virginia Hansen. The CSUSM School of Education uses part of the endowment funds for materials in the CSUSM Hansen Library, located on the fifth floor, and sponsors the Virginia Hansen Speakers events. Over the years, speakers have provided innovative best practices for current and future teachers. In this way, the Hansen family is assured that Virginia's legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of teachers in San Diego and beyond. The 2021 speaker series is dedicated to Virginia and all the teachers who devote their career to engaging, empowering, enriching their students. Our second sponsor today is Art Equals Opportunity. Art Equals Opportunity is led by the amazing and talented Dr. Goldberg and is a research-based movement that provides leadership training literacy residencies, summits, workshops, arts integration boot camps, and special events for educators, parents, youth, and teens through and art providers. 
Art equals opportunity focus on providing access to the arts for all children through exemplary educational practices based in arts integration and arts education. To learn more, please um, explore their website. Feel free to use their tools and follow Art Opportunity on social media to stay connected regarding upcoming events. Today's event is recorded and the Art Opportunity website will um, be a place where you can find this recording. Our third sponsor today is the San Marcos Writing Project that is led by the Director of the School of Education, Dr. Lori Stoll. The San Marcos Writing Project is one of 190 sites of the National Writing Project, 17 of which are in California. Um, it is a professional development network of teachers whose goal is to improve student writing achievement. The Writing Project is a valuable resource for teachers and school districts, and information about the Writing Project can be found on the CSUSM SOE website. And don't forget about our last event this spring, we have Christine Dixon, who is coming to teach us all about integrating STEAM into virtual learning. And that event is on April 24th from 10 to noon. Um, today, before you leave, I will be putting a survey in the chat. Please take a moment to fill it out. It only takes just a couple minutes. So today I have the honor to introduce you to an amazing inspiring educator, Alex Owens. I met Alex many years ago when he was a makerspace teacher at an elementary school in New Orleans where I was doing research. I have observed Alex bringing learning to life, giving kids opportunities they would not otherwise have, and also learn what amazing teaching looks like and sounds like. A few years back, I recall Alex and his co-director Diana's new idea to engage kids through podcasting. I was able to watch the journey from where kids started recording their voices on a computer on a kidney table, to kids recording using microphones and soundboards, to now kids producing beats, writing scripts, creating segments of a show. An inspirational organization this has become um, it, to amplify kids' voice through podcast productions. I watched camps and after-school programming that Alex and his co-director have created. And one of the biggest highlights of Be Loud Studios is helping kids to be confident, courageous, and to be loud. Um, another highlight of Be Loud Studios is now they have a radio hour, which is so amazing. It's a kid-run radio show that broadcasts on a local New Orleans radio station, WHIV 102.3 each week. So now I'd like to give Alex and Be Loud Studios and our guests from Be Loud Studios today a shout out. I am so humble and grateful that Alex and the student DJs from Be Loud Studios are here today to pass the mic to you so that you can bring the excitement of digital literacies, digital production, reading, writing, listening, but most of all speaking by learning how children's voices can be heard through the power of podcasting. I also want to give a shout out to our audience today for coming on a Saturday morning to continue learning through this extraordinary professional development. Now, it is my distinct honor to introduce you to Alex Owens from Be Loud Studios. Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, I'm Alex. Uh, I wouldn't, oh, there you are, Gossip. Good to see you. Uh, I am very intimidated right now. Uh, I often think like teaching like uh, 30 people in the same space with, with our Be Loud meetings is intimidating. But now I'm looking at this number. I think you heard me when I was unmuted talking to Byron on the phone. It's like, whoa, there's a lot of people. So uh, one, I say thank you. Uh, I ask for patience in, in the future. We're gonna do a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, but um, I really want to make sure that you walk away, not just with some like tools and tricks, uh, but also like a renewed energy to pass the mic to your students and create really awesome opportunities for them to be heard. With that said, I'm so grateful for the three DJs that I got joining us. Uh, Y'all are amazing. You could be anywhere. The, the weather is beautiful in New Orleans right now. And you're here with me. You're here with uh, this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. Um, before we get started, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, yes. Be Loud uh, Radio. Let me share my screen really quick. 
And this was the whole asking for patience part. All right. Cool. Uh, so be loud. We amplify kid confidence through radio production. Uh, before we kind of talk about what that means, I first wanted to do something. Um, DJ names are so important to us. Uh, in the last like six months, we've really realized how important they are. Um, we ask our kids to go by DJ names. One, it, it helps them. Uh, it, it's a little more safe, right? When we're putting their stuff out there, they can hide behind uh, the, their DJ name, but it's also really fun and it creates a culture. And, and when they walk into our space, whether it's virtual or physical, uh, they recognize that it's something different, right? This isn't class. This isn't an after school program, right? This is a studio. Uh, this is a radio station. So we are going to do the same thing. I'm going to give you two minutes. And in two minutes, I want you to do the following. I want you to come up with the DJ name. Uh, we have kind of three things that make a great DJ name. And I just did this with a second grade classroom. It was really awesome. Uh, the first is it's got to be positive, right? I'm constantly preaching that to our DJs, right? We write positive things. We put out positive energy. Our DJ name should be positive. The second is it should have kind of a detailed focus. Uh, the example I use is like DJ basketball is fine, right? That's cool. But DJ slam dunk, that's even better, right? DJ alley oop, DJ crossover, DJ jersey, whatever you want to be. If you can push details, not only do things become more compelling on the radio, but they also are a better reflection of the students. Uh, and then the last is it's got to be personal. Uh, it doesn't matter what your DJ name is, as long as it's Something to you. DJ Dice is the perfect example of that. DJ Villain is the perfect example of DJ Gossip. It's not often what you say, it's how you own your name. These three DJs are excellent at it. So what I'm going to ask is that you take two minutes, come up with your DJ name. And then if you know how, please change your name in Zoom. Um, if you want to put your real name in parentheses, you definitely can. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to require everyone to kind of jump in the radio station with us and change their DJ name. And I'm going to look at the participants to kind of start shouting out some. Don't be shy. Let's see it. Oh, DJ Luna Bear, DJ Kindness. I love it. DJ Jazzy J, DJ DZ, DJ Loca. Love it. DJ Cali. We got some Cali folks. That's right. DJ Love Bug. Yeah, these are amazing. So, Within like one or two minutes, right? You can either, you can really transform a space uh, to make it feel more fun, but also have a, a little bit of a, a possibility opportunity for reflections from kids to share who they are. Uh, I see a hand up, but I'm, I'm gonna wait to take questions if that's all right, Christian, or should I be taking questions as we go? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take one, I'll take uh, two people, they, they wanna chime in. So Randy, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask, uh, sorry, I was just trying to change my name. I'm ah, using my cool. phone. I got you. I got you. These mistakes happen, right? So, uh, awesome. Um, and then if you if you don't know how, you can always uh, you can um, message DJ Bookworm or DJ Dice. Uh, they definitely can help you out. Oh man, these are so great. Funk Master, Funky Fresh, DJ Happiness. Yes. Uh, cool. So thank you. Uh, so let's get into what we are going to be doing today. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the following. We are going to talk about what is Be Loud. I'm going to give you kind of a 15-minute overview from start to finish. Then I'm going to open up our library for you guys to listen to our work. After that, uh, you guys can ask questions to our three DJs here. I thought after you kind of listened to what Be Loud was and then listened to some of their work, it would be an awesome opportunity to ask them about their experience and process. Then we're going to say bye to them because they need to be outside on this Saturday. Uh, and then I'm going to flip it and you are going to record a segment with us. And then last but not least, I'll go over some big lessons that I've learned in the last couple of years as an educator. Uh, and I'll share some really practical tools. Um, a lot of this is just having the right tools, finding out what tools work best for you, starting small and just building momentum. Um, so if that sounds good, I see DJ Science Queen. DJ Science Queen, if you could like raise the roof or give me a thumbs up, if that sounds good. All right. Excellent. Um, so. Did you tell you? Where did this all start? Um, this started uh, a couple of years ago, as Christian start, um, alluded to. But more importantly, it started with DJ Gossip, who's on the call with us right now. 
uh, he was in fourth grade and uh, he was one of my favorites, still is one of my favorite students. I'm so happy that he still rocks with us. Uh, but I was running the innovation makerspace and uh, my partner was an academic writing interventionist. And we recognized that there were certain kids that, especially when they were in the makerspace, they had all sorts of energy and they, they were tackling big projects and they had so much creativity, but in their traditional academic work, we didn't see that same spirit, that same energy, that same commitment. Uh, we were trying to engage reluctant writers. Um, so we piloted a bunch of different ideas. How can we just get their pencils moving? Um, and we tried a bunch of different things. Some didn't work. And eventually we were like, what happens if we started a radio station? Let's just get crazy. Let's start a radio station. So we bought like a really cheap mic, 50 bucks. We found out we had GarageBand on our MacBooks. Neither of us knew how to use it. So we, we sort of started watching videos and we gave uh, all the DJs a blank script. And we had a lunch meeting with them and we said, when you fill this script out, we'll record you and you can be on the radio. Uh, and then the next morning was that aha moment. I was looking out the window and I see DJ Gossip come flying off the bus. He might not remember this. And he was so excited. He comes running through the door. It's before school and he slams down this script. And it was like scratched out, right? Uh, front and back. His pencil was moving. Mission accomplished. Um, and so we were like, great. But more importantly, he was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to record. And the moment we pressed record, there was this aha moment because we saw this energy and we saw this like, you know, creativity, not that was new in DJ gossip, but that always existed. And more importantly, was not being seen in his traditional academic work. There was a self-realization of the person he always was. And that was just so mind blowing of being like, why don't we see this in his writing? And more importantly, the power of the microphone is giving him the outlet to express himself. So I actually, uh, this will trip, trip him out. I wanna find this. Uh, I actually went back to our first episode ever so this is three years ago. This is a week before my, my son is born, which is crazy to me. And I just wanted to play what that sounded like. Hello, everyone. This is Byron Turner's New and Cool. On this show, Byron will be talking about new and cool things. This week's update is about slime. Slime is slimy and sticky, and they have a whole variety of slimes. Well, that's slime. So again, like it, there's so much about you, you could, you could immediately go to like, oh, well, okay. Yeah, that's great. But the fact that he filled out that script and then when we press record the energy of his voice, we knew even though we had a long way to go, there was something there. Uh, and so we really started just recording more and more kids. We started putting out a weekly episode where we got kids in this academic intervention, I'm scrolling through. Uh, they were really short. Nothing was longer than seven minutes. Uh, and the station kind of organically grew. Um, we went from kind of a pilot group of 14 students to working with grade level teams to then we started this school-wide station, which uh, Christian referred to as Brickle Radio. Um, and it was really powerful. Uh, we did that for six months. We, we recorded over 26 episodes. Uh, we started getting other teachers involved and, and it was really fun. And, and then we came to a crossroads where other schools started reaching out to us. Parents started inquiring about summer camp. Uh, and that led us to the decision of, okay, what, what would this look like citywide? So that's where uh, Be Loud Studios came in. Our first year, we launched a summer camp. So right after that experience, we launched a summer camp. That, there's DJ Gossip again. Uh, we just did two weeks of it just to be like, cool, what would this look like in summer camp form? Um, the following year, we started day camps over school breaks uh, for kids to come and when they were on break to just have a safe, fun space to hang out where they recorded. And then we started two after school programs, one with younger kids. What, happened, what does this look like with first graders? Uh, and then one we called out of, uh, on, the on the road. DJ Gossip was part of it. DJ Dice, that's where he got part of it too where we took kids outside of school uh, and interviewed local leaders, creatives, organizers. Uh, so that was Be Loud Studios year one. We also spent that first year kind of really defining what it meant to be loud. When we say be loud, we do not necessarily mean a loud voice, even though that's important. We ask kids constantly to define it. They'll say creative, they'll say brave, uh, but we are constantly trying to get them 
to tap into not just what loud means, but what does it feel like? And ultimately, we pinned down when we were talking about why is confidence. Uh, we align our work closely with Dr. Eileen Kennedy Moore, who wrote a book called Kid Confidence. And we try to amplify or develop kid confidence through these three indicators. Uh, one, competence, giving them real technical skills that they're learning, how to operate a mic, how to edit, how to do public speaking, how to slow down. Two, connection. That is so important. Creating experiences, not just for kids to record in isolation, but for them to develop relationships with each other and relationships outside the classroom, outside their own space. Uh, and then last choice, how do we get kids to create a portfolio of work that shows the awesome person they are? How is that culturally relevant? How is that expression of their community, their home, their identity? So those three things we really tie in to when we say we're building confidence, that's what we mean. And in that first year, we were getting some really awesome feedback. 91% of kids said they were learning multiple digital school tools from how to use GarageBand to how to use a mic. This I love, 94% of kids were reporting to make more than one friend. Um, and this was in spaces where kids knew each other a lot. So they were getting to know friends and people that they didn't really know. And then the biggest one was just like, families wanted more Be Loud. Every time we asked them, you know, you do you wanna do more program? And they were like, yeah. So we served over 257 students through that after school program, through those day camps and through that summer camp. Um, and we were kind of scaling up and we were like, cool, getting momentum. How do we do more day camps? Christian came to a day camp. How do we get more people involved? And then like eh, COVID hit, right? Um, and COVID, well, before I get into COVID, I, I forgot to add, remind, uh, you know, it wasn't just the numbers, right? It, it's what kids were saying. You know, I feel happy to express myself. I'm trying new things. I'm mega proud, right? A lot of kids were communicating this in qualitative feedback and informal feedback. But then this is Frankie, uh, we get to COVID. I don't know my own slides. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one. We also were measuring a lot of like what that transformation sounded like, but let's get into what happened with COVID so we can start really listening. Um, COVID happened and I realized that we were scaling up to become an organization that we didn't really wanna become. Uh, last year, I worked at a school where there were 800 students. I knew a lot of students but it was really hard to actually, when COVID happened, get in touch with students, reach out to students, work with students. And so COVID, probably for a lot of you as educators and as you know, uh, an organizer, really made me shift. What are the goals of this organization? Um, so I wanted to share a few. One, instead of trying to get as many kids involved and building our summer camp and being as many different schools across New Orleans, we decided not to scale up, but to scale deep. What happens if we rocked with 20 kids a year? What happens if we had DJ Dice and we made him feel so much like Be Loud that he would come to a Saturday morning uh, conference or that he would wanna come participate and just really feel like uh, he, he runs the station as we say. The second thing is we had to figure out how to do virtual. So this is a picture of uh, DJ Lynx um, and this is a picture of a virtual studio but in that idea of scaling deep, we bought microphones, headsets, sound trap licenses, adapters, t-shirts for all DJs and we went and delivered it at their homes. So they could create their own virtual DIY studio. Um, and then the last thing is, even though we were virtual, how do we also emphasize connection? How do we make sure that kids are not only connecting with each other, but they're also connecting uh, with the different adults, different mentors and different leaders, different coaches across the city. Um, so those three things were really, really important as we went on. And we did just that. We started moving virtually. Um, we meet every week on Mondays. That's production meetings. Uh, we have somewhere between 14 and 18 DJs that join us with a collection of hosts, uh, coaches, uh, and, and different collaborators. Uh, and the kids kind of connect. We have a little fun. Uh, and then they write a specific um, script, usually around a prompt. Uh, they talk about it, they record, and then we compile those recordings uh, to be put out um, together in kind of what we call segments. Um, so they record everything from when I hear Black Lives Matter. That was a response. Uh, DJ Gossip recorded something really powerful for that. We did a project in the, in the fall about Be Loud Against Bullying, um, them specifically talking about times they've seen bullying or they stood up to bullies. One thing you should know about me, that's where they describe uh, things that 
they think the audience should know about them, like DJ Dice's love for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, talking about Mardi Gras, right? Mardi Gras was not the same, y'all, this year. So we had the kids reflect on their favorite Mardi Gras moments. And then this is one of my favorites. I'm going to talk about the power of this. We did something called Turn It Up, Turn It Down. An educator reached out and he was like, yo, what you're doing is dope. Can I help? And so he created a segment where he comes in and plays music for kids and they react to it, either turning it up or turning it down. And that's what we did last week. So it's sort of like those reaction videos on YouTube. You see the twins doing it. Uh, he does that and we record the individual segments. So we compile these and we put them out on the Be Loud Radio Hour. Um, it just aired. I don't know if you heard it, Dice or Gossip. It was amazing. Uh, it's every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. It's on a community radio station, WHIV. Um, and it's just, it's, we don't call this a podcast for a reason. We call it radio. There is something a little more um, special about radio. There's something, you know, like since it's on demand, right? There's this demand that you have to kind of really tune in. And so it makes it feel a little more special, a little smaller. Um, we got a lot of feedback from families that they listen to the show while they're making breakfast or on the way to football practice, they'll, they'll tune in. And there's something just like that can't be replicated about that. So the fact that we put it on FM radio really like elevated our mission in a big way. Um, the second thing is when I approached WHIV, they were like, cool, yeah, you can have a time slot, but you need to fill an hour. And I was like, well, no one wants to listen to DJ Slime, DJ Gossip for an hour, as much as I love him. Uh, so how do we fill that space? Um, and that's when we really started to see the power and potential of this project. We started reaching out to community partners, uh, other schools, other nonprofits, other content creators. And we said, hey, if you got any old music or you got any old radio episodes or old interviews or old performances, then you have the MP3, we'll turn it into radio segments. And that's when we really went from like an uh, isolated project to kind of a community network. Um, most recently, that's turned into a fellowship that we started this January where we have educators, five educators from across the city. We've given them the cash, the, the tools, and the coaching they needed to kind of create their own weekly segments. Um, they are in the middle of their projects and it is amazing. Um, one of them I wanna highlight is from this organization, Dancing Ground. They're a dance studio, but they have a teen like academy, a, a youth teen group, and they can't get together and do performances in public. So they've been creating their own spoken word poems that they are now recording and we're putting on our radio show. Um, so when we started to reach out into the community, we started growing not only an audience and not only uh, collaborators and DJs, uh, but we started growing in terms of like that feeling of how special this is. So what I want to do, that's the most I'm going to talk, probably not. Uh, but what I want to do is the follow. I'm going to give you our Instagram. Please follow us. I'm going to drop these in the chat. I'm going to give you our Instagram. And I'm going to give you our SoundCloud page. Uh, now, ignore the hit numbers, right? You know, like we want to think about metrics. But what's most important is I want you to just click around. I want you to listen. Um, I'm going to give you five minutes. Listen to individual segments like, uh, like DJ Gossip's Black Lives Matter segment. Listen to whole episodes. Um, just sort of hear the different voices and different experiences. Uh, and then last, we are so honored to have three DJs with us. So I'm going to then pass the mic to you all. Uh, and to them and, and for them to share their experience. Um, Christian, does that, does that make sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. So okay. yeah, just go ahead and drop anything in the chat and then everybody can click on it and really amazing work. I'm excited for everyone to listen. Let me get them, so sorry. Um, please follow us too, y'all, you know. Got great stuff. Uh, and then here is our SoundCloud. I will say about our SoundCloud, we didn't have a SoundCloud account as of January, just because I really wanted to honor the radio aspect. But so many families like DJ Dice, your mom was really the inspiration for it. She was like, I want to share this work with grandma, but she lives in Jersey and she's not going to wake up this early. So uh, we wanted to start cataloging and creating this library. So that's our SoundCloud. So I'm going to start a five minute timer. Um, and I'll give you five minutes just to sort of click around. I really encourage you to do so.
how much I get. I would, like, the, the, the tip work that I did was, like, three of you all jump and say, kick it, kick it. That's the one that I would like, like, softer one on the double. Yeah. 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 Y
Cool. So DJs, be taking notes, right? What are some of the words that you're hearing, DJs? DJ Dice, DJ Gossip. Confident. Seen that word come a lot. Byron, you're getting a lot of love for your Black Lives Matter segment. Yeah, we talked a lot about vulnerability to that. Honest. Yeah, that's something we always talk about. Something DJ Villain, you're really good at, even though they didn't hear your good work. Enthusiasm, well-spoken, genuine. Yeah. So um, th this is amazing. Thank you. It's real. Yes. That's something that I care really about, that this is expression of kids. Um, now what I want to do is um, flip the script. We have the DJs for about 10 minutes. Um, I would love if you guys have questions on them. Again, after they leave, we're going to get kind of into how we do this uh, from a teacher's perspective. But if you have any questions for them, uh, this would be an awesome opportunity to really for them to share their experience. So what I would love first is while you guys are thinking some questions and I'm thinking Christian, they can just drop them in the chat and maybe you choose one and pose it or I choose one. I would love each DJ, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm gonna start with you villain. Um, I would love for you to unmute yourself, say your DJ name, say what grade you're in um, and maybe say one segment that you've made that really, uh, really, you really loved to make in the past six months. Um, I am just going to introduce this this one man right here. DJ Villain is not part of my uh, radio crew. That's mainly for middle schoolers. But we started working with high schoolers. Uh, I'm doing a special podcast project around his school with him, specifically him. And he also coaches these middle school students. Uh, DJ Villain is like amazing, uh, just a natural on the mic, but also has really helped me kind of think about how to, uh, how to organize this and make it more kind of uh, kid led. So DJ Villain, will you introduce yourself and then Dice and Gossip, will you go after that? Uh, hi, <laughs> my name is uh, DJ Villain. Uh, my real name is Vernell. And uh, I just, 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 just saw somebody like, just feel like my favorite question to answer. I, uh, somebody said, how did I uh, pick my name? Uh, the way that I pick my name, uh, Mr. Alex only knows like one part of this. Uh, first off, my name is Vernell. My name starts with V, villain, which made sense, right? But let me give you like the full scope of it, okay? So basically, I had a YouTube channel, I had a business. It was called Just In Case. The reason why I had it, didn't, had it as Just In Case is because I had a phone case business. I named myself Just In Case. But it turns out that there's a rapper that's up and coming. His name is Just In Case. So I was just like, no, I'm not about to let him catch me off guard like that. I'm about to let him do me that. So I thought very long and hard. My favorite character of all time is the Joker. The Joker is like, he's like, he's everything to me. You know what I'm saying? And Joker is a villain. And I've noticed that in every single story that I like, usually I always find the most important part of the story or the most interesting part of the story in my personal opinion is usually always the villain so I was just like okay I call myself villain and you know I have have my YouTube channel and stuff like that I renamed myself to villain headquarters and now I'm DJ villain but that's how I came up with my name you know um but as far as what I do for be loud uh I am actually a co-host of something called the rooted cash podcast which is essentially this podcast that uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a podcast that has to do with a uh, universal based income which uh is it's basically like a strategy or something of that nature where essentially people get a set income every month for you know being of certain age or certain thing of that nature and you know it's actually very cool you know we get to talk to a whole lot of people we get to like interview people who are like organizers and activists that are trying to implement ubi in you know different states and that things of that nature and my but my favorite one and um the favorite one that we've done so far in my personal opinion has to be the one where we talked to mr hassan hassan who is the uh you know the um ceo of 4.0 which is like really cool so, you know, it was, it was really cool doing this type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang, yeah. Uh, anybody who knows of Andrew Yang, you know, like, he was trying to actually implement that. And I was like, man, I was so, 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 so sad. 
you know, he, he dropped out of the race, but you know, it's unfortunate. But, hey. Cool. Thanks, and uh, Four Point yeah. Schools is an organization that's piloting Sorry. UBI at Rooted, yeah. where Villain goes to school. So they're actually Pretty piloting. Much. What would it look like if we gave kids a, a universal base income every week? Uh, and then they have brought us on to help them tell their own story. So big, Andy. big like shout out to, to Villain. But also he's an amazing coach working with kids every week. Uh, Dyson Gossip, do you want to introduce yourselves and then we'll take some questions? I guess I can start. Um, I'm DJ Dice, but uh, my real name is Oscar uh, Alberton. And I um, am really excited to be part of um, Be Loud. It's, really, it's a really great space. And um, I, um, my favorite, well, one of the coolest, in my opinion, funnest things that I've um, recorded was my recommendation uh, script where I, well, I mean, I guess if we're talking about really anything that I've recorded for Be Loud, I think um, back in the in the field trips, uh, I mean, after school, um, I really liked uh, recording um, people working at the Children's Museum in New Orleans that um, the new Children's Museum in City Park. Um, it's pretty fun. I learned a lot um, about the uh, new Children's Museum and the uh, missions that they have to um, entertain children. Um, and uh, I'm in fifth grade and yeah. So DJ Dice, can you give the audience a little bit of advice how you overcame being shy or um, were you ever shy or was it, are you just a, a natural? Well, I was, yeah, I was pretty shy at, um, and I still am, but I mean, I think that it's, uh, it's just really fun to actually do it. And it feels good um, to listen to yourself on the radio afterwards. And it, kind of all just overcomes the shy and I know that I mean well it it I know that I don't need to be shy really because it's just a great space where you can really put your feelings out and you don't really have to be shy awesome thank you so much and I've I've seen DJ Dice in action actually it's pretty awesome yeah, Dice, you are one of our more like uh, professional NPR, right? We got kids who will just like, come on and like grip it and rip it, you know, but he like, I feel like he puts his button up and uh, really kind of like punctual, well-written, uh, thoughtful scripts. Um, DJ Gossip, you want to introduce yourself, uh, what grade you're in, and then one thing that you've done with Be Loud that you loved, and then we'll take three or four questions. Hi, I'm DJ Gossip. I'm in seventh grade, and um, my name is Byron Turner. Um, I've been with Be Loud for a while now, when it first started. Uh, I remember Mr. Ellis came in my classroom, and he was like, Byron, I need you. <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was really confused, because a couple of my friends was there, and I was like, what's going on? What's going on? So, um, and we're walking down the hallway, and then that's when I got my first trip. And then we started talking, I was like, um, my favorite segment that I did was the um, Black Lives Matter one, if y'all listen to it. My favorite one, it's it's my favorite because it speaks on a lot of things and um, it was one of the best ones for me. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Gossip's superpower as a DJ is speaking from the heart, right? Like he can really tap into emotion um, and his Black Lives Matter script is a, a good example uh, of that um so christian i don't know if you've been kind of keeping track of questions do, do we yeah. just want to maybe yeah, ask with, four, three or four awesome yep we can do that and uh, maybe dj gossip you can answer this one um and i want to give a shout out i i was i was able to witness dj gossip in fourth grade i actually still have an illustration he drew on my ipad do you remember that byron of the 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 goose um, when he was doing writing his script. So I was able to see right at the very beginning, which is so awesome. And 
my, have you grown into just a, a amazing young man. I'm so excited to see you today. Um, so one of the questions is, and, and maybe DJ Gossip, you can answer this. Uh, do you have any fans at your school? Do your friends listen to your shows? I don't think so. I don't have any people at my school, but my parents are. Your biggest fans. All right. Yeah. All right, there's another question. Have you ever interviewed um, your teachers or other people at school? Yeah, I've interviewed a lot of teachers, a lot of teachers, um, mostly some te teachers in like my grade. I would sometimes go to the young grade. Actually, only the teachers that were actually at the building because usually I would do it after school and um, usually only teachers that are like actually there because, you know, they want to go home. So. <laughs> I feel like they'd be like, oh my gosh, when is this kid going to get done talking to me? I want to go home. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I know uh, DJ Dice, you talked a little bit about um, how Be Loud has really helped you with your confidence and giving you voice. Um, one of the participants today is asking the question, how has it helped your confidence or skills in areas such as relationships, um, academics, or just self-esteem. So either DJ Gossip or Dice, if you wanna jump in on that question. Well, I mean, academically, I think that I've definitely grown a lot. I feel much more confident of getting up and definitely like sharing um, my answers and um, pretty much anything. And I feel really excited to do it and explain doing a lot of explaining and um, academically and um, yeah, it just feels really good. And yeah, it's definitely boosted my self-esteem. It's boosted my self-esteem too, because when I get on the mic, I kind of just lose myself in my words because half of the segments I do and the Black Lives Matter one, they like come off the top of my head. So most of the time I don't really write I don't like write them down. I just, it just rolls off my head. <laughs> so I just like repeatedly keep talking until I'm like, okay, I need to finish now. So yeah, half of the segments I've done just rolled off the top of my head and I didn't really write anything down. Awesome, we'll take one more question. Something we are trying to get better at. <laughs> <laughs> one more question is, um, is, do you have any ideas of an, uh, um, a show that you'd like to produce, a topic? Um, I feel like I would probably do a Marvel show. So, yeah. How about you, DJ Dice? Any show that I could do? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think, um, I've been thinking about it. Well, I feel like it would be cool to kind of do like a fictional podcast, um, as well as uh, maybe doing sort of like, mm, I don't know, this is so hard. Uh, <laughs> maybe doing something along the lines of Dungeons and Dragons. So maybe like tips and just, um, or just character building and uh, maybe even some game or like game and uh, just, I don't, my words are kind of, uh, maybe like sick little parts of games too. I don't know. It, it's you're getting, you're getting a lot of love in the in the chat. I know, I see yeah. that you guys are gonna have this huge following. And hey, DJ Villain, why don't you drop your YouTube channel link in that chat so our friends can start following you as well? And anything else you want to share with everyone? I think. Um, you are going to have a huge following and we are going to be waiting for the next show to come on. Um, sounds like you've got great topics. So can, we'll can, I jump, can I jump in and do one last question with all of them just to kind of tie it together? Uh, uh, Villain, I would love someone asked, uh, what does it mean to coach? Near peer coaching is something we've really started to test and experiment. We have three of them right now. Um, so, so villain, what does it mean? What is it like joining these and, and working with younger students? Because I know you never wanted to be working with kids before this, and I kind of forced you to. So, so what is that? What is that like right now? Dude, 
dude, like, it's one of those things where it's just like you don't you don't really think you're gonna like it till you do it. Like, it, it's it's like it's one of those things in life where it's just like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because you told me to do it, but I ain't gonna do it because I don't want to do it. Then <laughs> you just end up being like, okay, I'm gonna still keep doing it, but I ain't doing it because I want to. And then next thing you know, you're just like, okay. Uh, I'm excited about doing it, but I ain't doing it because I want to do it. And you're just like, well, why are you excited about doing it? And I'm like, it's probably because I want to do it. So it's just like, you know, like, it, you know, so it, it, it's it's really like, it, it, there's a there's a certain point where you can't deny that what you're doing is kind of like, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I can mess with this. So, you know, uh, that's pretty much how this went down. Like, I was just like, okay, all right, children, yeah, it's okay, children are nice. They can be nice sometimes. And I was just like, okay, these children are pretty nice. And I was like, love these children. No, like, <laughs> you know, but like, man, let, you know, let's be real, man. You, you're texting me pictures of things that kids should okay. be writing about, you know, like on the weekend. So you're you're getting more and more into it. And uh, yeah, his channel, like you just exposed me in front of 197 <laughs> people. Yeah, like, oh, they should be writing about like you're getting more into it now and now. Um, cool, villain. Thank you so much. His his uh YouTube channel. Uh, it was like a personal project that he shared with me and was just like, hey, I'm, I'm into this. And I watched it. And although it's not exactly like uh, school appropriate, I was just like, automatically, you saw that this kid had talent, right? And so, Villain, thank you so much, man. I, I look forward to continue working with you. Uh, and then I would love to just ask Dyson Gossip. Um, and then I promise we'll move on, Christian. Uh, Dyson Gossip, like, if they're, these are all teachers, right? So if you were, I'm about to talk about tips and tricks. If there was one tip you would give them about starting something, a radio project with their students, what would that be? If there was one tip, trick, advice that you guys had. Just to let them be themselves, that's all. Yeah, and I, I can also say that. Um, let them really bring out what makes them excited. So um, things like, I don't know, uh, for radio or um, stuff like um, uh, one thing about me script or just really um, let them bring out what makes them excited and what makes them happy. Yes. Awesome. Villain, do you want to hop in with that question too? Or are you good? Uh, yeah, uh, please restate the question. Uh, if there's one tip you would give a, a teacher who is like, eh, I'm, I'm trying to get into this, what, what would be one? Tip oh, dude, you? man, you got to be able to listen. Like, if you're not able to listen, get away. Get away, bro. Like, get away. You got to be able to sit down and just listen to children. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, if you can't, like, sit down and listen to, to these kids, then walk away. Don't waste your time because you need to be able to listen to kids. Plain and simple. You not only need to be able to listen to children, but you need to be able to get children that wouldn't want to speak to speak. Because, like you know, like certain people, they they like they don't you know they don't listen to children. They want children to listen to them. This is not a situation where that's going to work out in your favor. Saying so, just be able to listen to children and be able to like do like induce children and like get them to speak to you and get them to speak about themselves, you know what I'm saying? And you'll be good, be Gucci. If you can get that out of them, then that's good. That's good, already on the right path, yeah. Yo, so every time we start uh, a program, whether it's the first day of camp, second day of camp, or it's uh, our virtual meetings, we go over three values. Uh, we all run this station. We only get better through feedback and show up and be loud. Y'all, you three, you just did all three. I'm so grateful that you were part of this program. I can't wait to grow it with you. Uh, and I'll see y'all on Monday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to shout them out in the chat, go out, go outside, have fun, do something weird. Thank you, Dice and Gossip and Villain. It was such a pleasure to have you today. Have a great weekend. Peace out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate you, Villain. Peace out, man. See you. All right, later, man. Cool. Peace out. Uh, all right. So um, I'm, I'm running a little behind, Christian. I'm sorry, but like, I no, just. We're, we're
we're all good. We've got, uh, was, uh, we've I just, got time. Those, those kids, uh, a couple kids couldn't make it, but uh, I think that gives you a good sense, right? This idea of importance of listening, letting them be themselves. Um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the lessons I've learned, but first I want to eh, flip it and I want to put it on y'all. Uh, I'm a big, big believer uh, in I don't ask kids to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Uh, so we are going to record something right now. Okay. Uh, and I'm also going to show you a few small tricks. So um, collaboration has been really important to us. Collaborating with organizations. Uh, oops, wrong one. So sorry, guys. Collaborating with organizations. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. But I do want to highlight one project we did um, last, oops, last summer. Uh, if you've heard of 826 Writing Center, uh, they have one in LA, they have one in San Francisco, they have one here in New Orleans. Um, after the murder of George Floyd, uh, we were really talking about this idea of how does Be Loud amplify other organizations um, rather than trying to conquer other organizations? How do we make sure that the work of other people, other educators are, is really being heard, especially uh, a black and local to New Orleans? Uh, we then uh, collaborated with A26, who was really on the same level uh, around something called Celebrate Black Joy Project. Uh, they recognized uh, this idea of like one dimensionality of how black people and the black experience are being portrayed. So they had a writing project called Black Joy and they asked us if we could record some. So we did this with our summer camp uh, and I wanted to share you uh, one of my favorite DJs, uh, DJ, that's his name, uh, his Black Joy Project. Hey, this is Jerron, aka DJ, and this is what makes me happy. A girl being a president, I like eating pizza, being with my mom, and I like being at camp, and I like going outside looking at stuff. This is by Jerron, aka DJ. So this is what, that's what makes me happy. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye, I love you, bye. All right, so uh, Jerron was second grade going into third grade and he wrote recorded mixed all the sound effects you hear all by himself um, we're going to talk about the tools that he used to do that but before we do that we're going to flip it and i would love everyone to create their own joy list so i'm going to give you three minutes you got a piece of paper you got a pencil uh write four or five things that make you happy uh, that give you joy uh, again, I'm going to push you to be detailed. So don't just say ice cream, but say your favorite flavor and where you eat it. Uh, don't just say basketball, but think about one thing that you love, right, about when you're playing basketball. Um, think about the details of the things that make you uh, that make you really joyful. And let's keep it to four or five. So I'm going to give you two minutes to do that. Could you restate the prompt? Yes, I'll, I'll put it in the chat too. Uh, list four things that give you joy. And again, really pushing you for details. Uh, you do not need to put them in the chat. Just write them on a separate piece of paper. Uh, if you want to write them in the chat, though, you definitely can. A smile is a great one. Thank you, DJ MM Love. Let's do one more minute. Cool. I'm actually loving people who are sharing it in the chat. Clean sheets. That's a great one. You don't have to share it in the chat, but if you want to, if you want to, you have a little extra time. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to move on. 
family, music, good food. So that's one where I'd push details. Like, right, what type of music do you like? Where are you when you're listening to this music? Uh, exploring new worlds and video games. Ooh, I love that one. Okay, so we'll hold on there. Next, what I want you to do is, again, if you have a piece of paper, I always tell kids, come with a piece of paper and pen or pencil. Then I want you to package it. Oftentimes, if we just have kids read their joy list, it, it comes out flat. So I always am preaching intros and outros. Right now, we're going to do an intro. So this is where you take your joy list and you say, hello, this is DJ. My DJ name is Flip Phone. Laugh later. Uh, from Be Loud Studios. And here's what brings me joy. And then that's where I would read my list. So if I was DJ Cosmopolitan, I would say, hello, this is DJ Cosmopolitan from California. And here's what brings me joy, playing music, going to the beats, traveling, and playing soccer. I'm going to give you one minute to kind of sketch out, put that in your head. You're going to pair your joy list with your introduction. And then we are going to record it. So I encourage you uh, to write it down. But if you can put it in your head, go ahead. Ooh, Duncan Stein, bringing that fire. Highlight play in basketball. Okay, so now I'm going to give you four minutes to actually record. When I've started working with new teachers, these are the first two tools that I suggest. So many teachers automatically want to buy mics, get the studio set up, Anchor FM, how are we going to distribute? And the first thing that I tell them is just start collecting content. And so these are two amazing tools that you can use. I'm going to drop both of these in the chat. First is a, a, a website called SpeakPipe. When you come to it, I'm going to go to it right now so you guys can see it. Oops. Uh, this is SpeakPipe. Oh, nope, you can't see it. Let me get to the other one. When you go to SpeakPipe, you will just see start recording. So you just press the button. Uh, and it will not only record your voice, but then it will send that to me and organize it. Uh, another tool that I use is Google Voice. Really low level, great way to start sharing. Uh, so right now I'm going to ask for you to either click our SpeakPipe link in the chat or pick up your phone. I'm going to mute myself and call in and leave your joy list, right? So you say your introduction. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Marvel from California. Here's what brings me joy. And then you say you're joyless. All right, cool. I'm going to give you guys five minutes to do that. I'm about to drop the link in the chat. So there is SpeakPipe, backslash Be Loud Studios, and the phone number if you want to call old school. Is that? 504-571-9809. All right, see you guys in five minutes.
All right, I don't wanna mess up anyone's recording, so sorry if I do, but if you're done, we have 30 seconds. Just think about like how that felt, right? Pressing record, putting yourself out there um, and drop it in the chat, I'd love to see. Awesome. So I'm seeing some people saying that they were nervous, having a hard time putting themselves out there, nerve wracking, right? You get lost in the moment, uh, fun, right? So again, this is how kids feel when they record, right? So we have to have a lot of empathy, especially uh, when they get younger. Um, but uh, th there's a lot of different things, right? That comes to it, right? It's a mixture of things. It's not just one thing or another. And that's, that's what I love about the experience of recording your voice, uh, especially playing it. Now, I wonder how you would feel if I then played all your recordings, right? So that's like the next step, right? Is like, cool, we recorded in a vacuum, but now DJ Dice, I'm gonna play you for everyone else to hear. Um, and I'm gonna talk a lot about creating audience in a little bit. That is so, so, so important. Um, people feeling anxious, uh, never got a chance to replay. Yeah, super big. I, I definitely feel you in that, um, DJ. Um, okay, so I am going to move on. Uh, first of all, y'all are awesome. Your energy is incredible right now. Really appreciating like everything that you're doing and, and that you're having the enthusiasm to try it yourself. So thank you for that. You probably didn't sign on to be like, oh, I'm gonna be radio. Christian and I are gonna talk about what to do with these recordings. Uh, I'm, I definitely want to shoot some back at you. Uh, I'll be talking about that in a little bit, um, but let's get into the next part. Um, so can make a mention real quick about SpeakPipe that it's uh, just tell them that, that that it's a free tool, but um, the link that you gave them shouldn't be used for. Yes. Yeah. So uh, great question. I'm going to talk about SpeakPipe in a little bit. Uh, SpeakPipe, that's my account. SpeakPipe is free. All right, so you can set up your own account. It's very easy. Uh, and and um, so basically like all those recordings are now rushing into an inbox that I have. Um, and I'm gonna talk about how I filter some of that stuff out, uh, but SpeakPipe's awesome. I actually heard it on a podcast and they're like, submit questions by going to SpeakPipe. And I was like, oh, that's genius. Uh, Cause I was just using a lot of Google voice uh, and another website that I'll show you. Um, but cool, let's talk first. Um, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen. Uh, and Christian, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see this? Make sure we're good. Yeah, cool. Um, so let's talk about like kind of big lessons. Um, I usually talk about like tips and tricks first, but I, I think it's really important to uh, ground this first into like um, kind of the big learnings that I've had. Uh, and I say this with some humility, like we are far from perfect. Christians come to a lot of our programs and they're messy, they're chaotic. Kids are not always engaged, right? The recordings they make are not always so cute and great, right? Uh, this is really hard work. Creative teaching is really hard work. Listening to kids is really hard work. We often fall short, uh, but we have a guiding light and we've learned a lot of things along the way. And, and that's, our, that's kind of the big lessons I wanted to share with you first. Um, so the first one, I had a math teacher who taught me pre-algebra and she would always tell me kiss, keep it simple, stupid. She was a little old school. So I, I really like that about her. Um, but this is what really changed my head around podcasting or radio work with kids. When I had tried it in the past a few times, it was all about how do I make this crazy series that's 40 minutes long and kids are producing it. And what about length? And then, I, and then I get stuck with these rambling conversations between the teenagers and you're just like, no one wants to listen to this. Uh, this the secret sauce to what we do, uh, I credit completely to my co-founder. We keep things short. So we don't have kids record things that are longer than a minute or two minutes. We really try to get them to make one minute things that are personal and powerful. Um, and then we just consistently give them that same structure every week. Um, even when we struggled in the beginning of those scripts with Byron, 
they were fun for about a month, but then we didn't see real any improvement because they the kids were kind of just rambling on. And so the moment we started to box them in a little bit, give them more structure, but give it, make them shorter and make their scripts a lot shorter. That's when we really, really started to hear um, not just like personal things, but like quality things. Uh, so that is my first lesson to you. Um, and and the, the good thing is we all teach in classrooms where there's 25, 30 kids. And so that is a great way to honor all voices. If it's all short, then you can compile it later and make sure every kid's heard as opposed to being like, oh, how do I get all of them to do this podcast if it's so long and, and rambling? So keep it short. That's like the secret sauce. This is another thing. Uh, I call it the 10% rule. It's something I've really been thinking about lately. Um, most people think that recording this podcast comes down to recording. Um, and I like to break down the process into three parts when I'm planning and three parts with kids. The first part is writing, drafting, and critique, right? How are kids getting this script right? How are they talking about it? How are they redrafting it? How are they giving each other critique on it? The second one is the actual recording. How do we press record? And then the last is then how am I mixing it? How am I compiling? How am I moving all these crazy files everywhere off my speak pipe? How am I editing it? And then the big one is how am I sharing? Most people only think about the recording. How am I gonna get the right microphone? How am I gonna get all the kids on the microphone? And actually that is only 10% of the work. I would say most of the work comes writing. So if you're an English teacher, you're already doing the work. If you're a science teacher and your kid wrote a lab, you've already done the work, right? It's really, this is the most important part. And this is something that we're trying to emphasize more and more in our curriculum and more in the work. And then this is where teachers get stuck the most. How am I now taking all this content? What am I going to do with it? If you don't have a plan for that, and then kids are just dropping a bunch of voicemails, you'll never do anything. So having a really clear vision of how you're going to share it and then how you are going to mix it, even if it's really simple, is important. So the 10% rule is put more thought into these two things rather than the actual recording. I'll talk a little more about that. Um, the next real big lesson is uh, creating audience for kids. This is the most important work, especially with a lot of youth in New Orleans uh, who are unheard, right? I, I think youth in general do not have an uh, audience, right? One of the biggest things that was driving me crazy in the lockdown was you would listen to NPR and they would talk about what virtual learning looks like. And they would talk to the teacher, the principal and the parent, but you never heard from kids, right? So youth in itself is a lost voice, but then we're especially talking about black and brown youth in New Orleans. We're talking about BIPOC youth. We're talking about in some cases, LGBTQ youth. Um, and so really like it is on me as an adult to find the audience for kids and make sure that their voices are heard. Um, someone asked like, hey, do you have any fans at school? When we first started this, we thought it was gonna be kids listening to kids. We were like, oh, how do we make kid content by kids for kids? And now that I'm doing it more and more, I'm realizing kids are already listening to kids in their own way. TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, they're already making stuff and messaging each other. Where we come in is we make kids for a kid content for adults to listen to. That is what's missing, right? How do we help them translate what they're going through for adults to listen to? And that starts with the most important audience is their family. So yes, we put it on FM radio. Yes, we like to put it on social media. But the number one thing we've worked on this year is how do we make sure that every parent is the biggest fan of their kids' work? Cool, we got that, let's move a circle out. How do we make sure their teachers and mentors are the biggest fan of their work? So again, I mentioned the story, when we hear parents talking about sitting around the table, listening to the Be Loud Radio Hour, like that is like, cool, mission check. I don't care if we get a thousand views on Instagram, we probably never will. But if we are intentionally sharing this with our small community, it can have just as big impact. Uh, and then the last thing about this is how to create audience for kids within the program. So it's not just about kids listen, uh, making and recording. It's also about forcing them to listen to each other's work. How does that build empathy and how does that build connection is something we're not very good at, but we are getting better at. Um, so one example is we do something called the golden mic. 
we have three criteria for a golden mic. It has to be balanced. That means all the levels are right. It has to be personal and it has to be complex. Uh, that means it has to have music and complexity idea. And we talk about these things with kids and then every week kids listen to each other's work and they vote on the golden mic winner, right? So we have them judge each other's work based on our criteria. And then we play it for everyone to hear. Uh, at camp every morning, the first 30 minutes of camp is them scrolling in their seesaw pages and just commenting on what they like. So building spaces for kids to listen to kids within the class is so, so important. Uh, and then the last thing, uh, this one is so huge. Uh, I can't understate this. Uh, oop, let me go back. Um, connect and partner. This has been the coolest part about Be Loud is like, cool, recording for recording sake is interesting. Yeah, great. We can talk about uh, one thing about you or a recommendation you have. But if we can use the microphone as a vehicle to take kids and put them out in the community, like all of a sudden we're transforming that, right? And we're connecting them not just with other kids, but community leaders, creatives, organizers, mentors, coaches. And so to me, this comes in two ways. Find local organizations that are doing dope things and ask them if you can write a segment about them. That's how we started with A26 with the Black Joy Project. Uh, we also, the mayor put out uh, a, a big call for people to request uh, ideas around how to do Mardi Gras due to COVID. We wrote the mayor's office and we were like, hey, cool. Can we write some scripts for you? Uh, and she never directly got back to us, but the, the person in the office did. Um, so that's also coming down to creating audiences, right? Like if we can create smaller audiences, like-minded organizations to help um, on, not, not today, but next week, we are going to an organization called Loop NOLA where they do canoeing and wilderness survival skills. And we're just taking kids out to go on canoeing and then they're gonna record about it. So like you can record about anything, um, but finding those partners, finding those experiences and then bringing a microphone can really up the quality and create that network of people that I'm talking about. Um, this picture is really awesome. This was at the sculpture uh, garden uh, right down the street about 10 minutes away. We took a public bus. Uh, I had 10 kids after school. Uh, and we went to the sculpture garden and, and this man here was the community uh, curator. So he just talked to the kids about the work they saw. Um, so you all do field trips, right? How can you turn that into a radio segment, right? Something really powerful. Um, so KISS, 10% rule, creating audiences and connect and partner. Those are big, big lessons we've had. I, I wanna take a pause because I talk too much. Um, I would love to flip it in the chat. If there's something that, you that resonates with you that you either do well or you want to do better uh i would love to hear it so let's take like three minutes to just um kind of reflect on some of those big lessons what's one thing that just resonated with you yeah thank you dreamweaver this is super hard. Yeah, I'm going to be talking a lot about that with the tools. Yep. Yes. Awesome. Creating an audience. That's so much work. Yes. Icebreakers. Yes. Golden mics. Yeah, DJ Science Queen. I, I can show you, share you more some of the resources we use with kids about that. Yeah, dog mom. Awesome. Parent involvement. They're overlooked, right? They're overlooked oftentimes in, in how we share work. Cool. Awesome. So um, the last kind of section of this, and then I'll take questions from, from anyone, is... Uh, I wanted to just go over some of the tools I use. Um, I've created a resource sheet that I'll share with you um, after, just a two-pager on, on what we do with kids. Um, and then um, I'll, I'll take questions at the end. Uh, DJ Science Queen asks, where do you post so family and friend can hear the radio production? I'm, I'm not going to give any tools on how to share work. Uh, you're more than welcome to email me, but we use SoundCloud. Uh, when we started, we just built our own website on Wix or WordPress. Um, 
maybe you're some some schools are just having like can you share it on our instagram that we work with some are integrating into their website so there's a thousand ways if you want to email me i'll give my email at the end you can definitely um you know i, I can go over that um but again the audience is like you can make the most fancy website but if people aren't going to it uh that doesn't matter and and one thing christian you might remember this one thing we did was when we first started we actually bought uh uh, a broadcaster, an FM broadcast, um, like a, a not a receiver, but uh, I forget what it was called. And it, it was illegal, right? We didn't have a license uh, and you can only broadcast a hundred feet. And we got an antenna and we found one that could go uh, about 250 feet. And I asked my boss and he said, okay, if they come for us, then they'll write us a letter. And then we just take it down a transceiver. Thank you. Uh, and we just did it during carpool. And then I would have kids knock on the windows and be like, yo, turn on your radio to 89.6, some obscure FM radio station. Uh, and so parents would listen to it in the car. And, th and that was kind of our first, first attempt at it. So any way that you can do it, uh, uh, that's what's most important, how you get people there. So uh, digital tools. I'm going to get off this screen. Um, and I'm going to go, and I kind of lost some of these tools in the shuffle. So I'm only going to give you a few, but you have you have the resource sheet that I'll share. Um, and this will be the last thing. So the resource sheet looks like this. On the first page, there's radio tools. And then on the back, uh, there's just a bunch of apps. Like I love seeing what other teachers are doing with like apps and, and, and media apps. Uh, and then I gave kind of like a hotline one pager when I do something with a teacher, I, I really just put my language. This is all I send teachers and I say, you figure it out. And we've gotten some really cool hotlines. I'll talk a lot uh, about that later. Um, but let's first get into spe uh, SpeakPipe. SpeakPipe is free. It is amazing. So not only do um, you can record easily, but then on the back end, uh, kids can then, this is what it looks like. Now I have all your responses. I can reply to them, I can share them, but most importantly, I can download them. Um, I talked about my Pass the Mic Fellowship and we had two teachers who wanted to start podcasts, but they had never done it. They started here, uh, cause I was like, don't try to get into the weeds with editing. And they started here and now like the pieces they are creating are amazing. The last thing they created was, um, uh, they did family stories, which were so awesome. Like telling a story to a family member and then they had, um, she works with teens, uh, talking to uh, a fictional judge and jury about why they shouldn't be punished about some social uh, standard that is against uh, uh, women. And, and they were just really powerful poems. Uh, and the recordings were all 45 seconds. And so again, most of the work was done on the front end and it was really easy for kids to record. Um, if you let this if you're only worried about your 10% though, and you let this get unwieldy, you will never come back to it. So one thing I suggested to the teacher is she has her regular class and her honors class. Her honors class has access to the speak pipe. They download all them. They put them in a Google drive folder. And now every week they have a listening day where kids go through and like filter the best seven or eight that they should share. So you can pass some of that work along to kids of the technical, how do we download this stuff, but also the curating, what is the most important, what's the most compelling stuff, and that takes it off your load. Um, same thing with Google Voice, right? This is what it looks like on the back end. What I love about it uh, is it also transcribes it for you. It's not always perfect, but then you can download it, put it on, and it has the date. Um, this is what we went through. Want to, this is what we went to right after COVID. Um, and that's where we did things like, I'm just going to bring up on Instagram. Um, it was a while ago. Uh, we started things called the community hotline. So we wanted to hear kids' experiences about COVID. Uh, and so we put out the number and kids, we would have 20 to 25 kids every week uh, call us in and telling us what they were doing, what they loved. And then we put that out for the rest of the school community to hear. Um, we still do hotlines. Um, the most latest one, I don't think I have it on our Instagram. The most latest one was we did a hotline with a school, uh, my old school, Bricolage Academy. What does Black Lives Matter mean to me? 
Uh, the teachers did all that work. All I did was help them compile and put it out. Um, so these two tools are really similar. I used to give out this website. Um, this online voice recorder, same thing. It, it's sort of like voice memo, but digital. So a lot of people are like, oh, I'll just have them record on their phones. The problem with that, kids, even a kid like Vernell, have really hard time taking an MP3 and then sharing it, emailing it, renaming it, organizing it. And so if you can do a lot of that work on the front end, like through a speak pipe, uh, it makes it so much easier for you then to come back and edit it or have a group of kids edit it. Um, so those are kind of the most like basic uh, sport, sport um, voice capture. Seesaw is also another great one. Um, these two tools are the ones that like, if you really wanna get in the game, this is what I suggest. And I wanna say a quick thing about tools. It actually doesn't matter what you use, right? You could use GarageBand, Pro Tools, whatever. Like you just gotta to find tools that you're most comfortable with. This is the tool that's changed the game for us. It is called Soundtrap. We used to record everything on my classroom devices, GarageBand, uh, GarageBand super easy, but it was hard for second graders. It was a lot of buttons they didn't know how to press, but it was also everything was stuck on the device. Soundtrap is a web-based digital tool, right? So not only can I log off from my computer and then go home, right? And get on a different device and log on and access the same project, but I can easily share it with my teacher, with my friends, with my mom. And then what I love too is like, you can write notes back and forth. So I always write a little note, right? In this little section. Um, this looks really intimidating, right? Uh, the vocal tracks, right? They can, what I also love about sound, Soundtrap too is like, I'll play a little bit of it. The thing you should know about me is that I really like slacklining. If you don't know what slacklining is, it's a lot like tightrope walking. Right, so this is DJ Pride talking about her love for slacklining. She can edit it. She can create different tracks. She can layer music. When you listen to Jaron's um, Jaron's piece about Black Joy, DJ Gossip's piece, they use Soundtrap, so they can do more complex things. Um, but like most importantly, it's so easy to share, uh, and it's so easy for them to come back to. These things don't have to live at school. They can live at home, which is so important to us. Um, I really suggest that you go to Soundtrap for Education. I wish I was getting paid for Soundtrap. I wish this was a Soundtrap, uh, you know, uh, certification course. If you know anyone there, please tell them that I love them. Uh, but they have great online resources. They have videos, and they also have um, certification classes for teachers. So they have their own like. Uh, classes that you can take. Anyone that coaches with Be Loud, I make them do. Um, and then if you really want to up your game, uh, Audacity, which I'm sure a lot of you might know, is a free software that kids can download on any device. Um, so it's not web-based. It's got a little more power to it. Um, but Audacity is a really, really great tool for those of you who are like, cool, yeah, I know how to do sound editing, but my kids don't, and I want them to have a free tool. Audacity is like a really great choice. Um, if you're someone who's worried about like microphones, anything, I can, you can email me. I'll give my email at the end and I'll share you what, what it is, but we use really cheap mics, UFB, USB mics, things that won't get destroyed, things that won't get broken. Um, we try to create this environment that kids can create their own recording studios at home. So the barrier to entry should be really low. Uh, we want a big grant. Christian remembers this and we got a big grant. And our school really wanted us to create a school recording station. And I was really adamant that we should not use the money to make a fancy space that kids won't use, right? Instead, how do we redistribute that money to kids? And how do we give them the, the uh, equipment to do this at home? Uh, I think that's important. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to, I put on here is bonus digital tools. Uh, recognizing that radio is our primary vehicle. Audio is, is what we're trying to train kids, but they live in a visual world. So at our day camps, we also have a lot of visual activities. On our calls, I ask them to make a lot of visual things like GIFs. So I just wanted to share a few tools, mainly these top three. Um, the first one is uh, called Adobe Mix. It's like Photoshop's training wheels. It is amazing. Kids can learn how to cut themselves out pretty clean, cleanly and put in backgrounds. Uh, we 
have something called the anywhere in the world challenge on our camp where they pose. And then I say, put yourself in a place that you want to be. So this kid loves Sonic. So he decided to put himself in Sonic. Um, our Kayla here, uh, she, she was like not feeling camp that day. So she just wanted to be on vacation. So she just cut herself out and gave a meme. She wrote that in. So we love Adobe mix. It's super easy. I do this with first graders. First graders can do this. If, if you show them a uh, second thing we do, we make tons of GIFs. Um, so like our second day of camp, after they have their DJ names, we have them create GIFs that are about interests of theirs. Uh, and then they act it out. This is a 10 minute thing that they do, but we share them constantly. And it, it allows them to like, kind of have a little bit of uh, say over how they're portrayed. And then we can pair this with our content, right? We can use these GIFs to pair with our content that we put on Instagram. Uh, and then the last thing along with that is like, we love flip a clip. Um, so it's like animation again, like it, it could be a professional animator tool, but it's training wheels. And so kids take videos of themselves and then give themselves superpowers, uh, by animating it. Uh, and again, this takes them 15 minutes to do, uh, uh most of these students you see in our, are in third grade. Um, so I left some other tools in here. Reverse cam is a really great app. We make movie trailers. The last two, Canva, uh, if, you, if you have older students, right? How much can kids be packaging their work? Uh, how much can they be creating the design? Um, so like the Be Loud logo, most of this stuff was created by high school interns. Um, that was, this was, right? And they use Canva, we give them free Canva accounts. Um, and then the last, this is super cool. I just found this out. Uh, video ask. I know there's Flipgrid, right, where you can do videos, but this is cool because it like video ask is through Typeform, uh, a survey company. And I've seen a couple people use this nationally where they just get kids to record messages and they just embed this link in a survey that they have for kids. So you don't have to like go into the Flipgrid, sign into the Flipgrid. You can just literally like embed this in a link uh, and it's really, really powerful uh, or accessible too. Um, so that's, that's kind of all the tools that I had. Uh, I'm gonna stick around for a little bit to take any questions. But the last thing before um, uh, I go in, I'm gonna make sure that this is shared with you right now. Oh, let me do one thing that I never remember. A lot of you are probably going to. Well, actually, Alex, can we hold off on sharing that with them? I'm gonna send it through um, the registration on Monday. That way they'll have a link to this video as well. Is that cool? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That way you all have it in one place with this recording. Um, and then I think Alex is going to share his slides and then all those resources. So you'll get that um, by email on Monday. Yeah. I'm um, gonna right now, stick in the chat, the feedback form. So um, as Alex is uh, finishing up and if you have questions, if you could just take a minute and fill out the Qualtrics survey, please. And if you finish the survey early, I'm just going to pop this screen on it. Like, I would love a big thing is just like, what is one thing you can do before the end of next week to pass the mic to your students, whether it's a tool or whether it's just something more uh, pedagogical that you learned today. Um, so if you want to drop that in the chat, I would love to see it and I'll keep my email up as well. Um, so do we want to give five minutes for the survey and then I'll take questions, Christian? Is that yeah, work? that's absolutely fine. Okay. Sounds good. And I just want to give a shout out to Alex again. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for bringing the DJs to us. I thought this was just an amazing professional development opportunity. Um, I hope everyone has takeaways and you are as excited about podcasting as I am with students um, and the potential of, I, I just love this. And Alex knows I'm a, the biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Christian. Uh, thank you all for coming on a Saturday. And uh, I'll stay on for a little bit more. So at 1.40, my time uh, at, at 40, uh, I'll start taking questions if you wanna stick around and, and just talk more. And that's my email. So if you got any questions and you can't stick around, please, please, please uh, let me know and email me. Thank you, Alex. Peace out. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Awesome, thank you, man, appreciate it. You got any questions, stick around, love to, love to connect. Uh, you can also email me.
cool. Mama Bear, I see you. I'll, I'll take that question first for sure about the prompts. That That is a really important thing to think about. Um, cool, yeah. Awesome ratio. I'll, I'll start taking questions now, Christian, if, if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I see a lot of people are leaving, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, about prompts, um, that's really hard. Uh, I've, I've moved into a space where, um, I'll get out of here so I can actually see. Uh, I've moved into a space of uh, two things. One, again, connecting to partners. So trying to find organizations that can either come in and share something with kids and then they give the prompt. That's been really powerful. For example, we're doing a project with the Tulane School of Public Health and they are presenting information on why people should get vaccines. And then the kids are turning that into letters to their community. Um, so that was like, cool, let's find a partner to give us a prompt. Uh, I'm constantly looking for like applications in the news. So that's where the mayor's prompt came in about what we should do with Mardi Gras. Um, and then the last thing is like asking kids uh, and really trying to think more about uh, what they wanna do. Um, and so sometimes uh, in our, we give a survey at the end of every meeting and I'll say like, hey, what's a good prompt for next week? 90% uh, of the time they either say IDK or uh, they, they don't really have like a response, uh, but then um, sometimes we'll get some nuggets and that's where our recommendation um, prompt came from. They just wanted to talk about things they love. Um, I'm not gonna play a sample. I, I should have, thank you for that, Norma. Uh, I could have played something off the speak pipe. I didn't want to embarrass anyone, uh, but I am going to take some of them. Uh, I have two high school interns and they're going to go through some and we'll, we'll flip it around and share it with Christian and put it out for you guys to hear to follow up. I wish, I, I wish you said that before, Norma. I would have played a few people uh, to put them on the spot. Yes, I will put the link in the chat, Christian, if you don't mind. Yeah, I see some some people have uh, reflections due for their coursework, so that that's awesome. Yeah, and I will get that link out right away on Monday morning for everyone. If anyone like wants to unmute themselves too, um, hey Alex, I had a question for you. Oh yeah, give me one sec. I need to oh, change. Oh, sorry. The access, it always gets me, you know, when you're rushing. All right, it should work now. Sorry, y'all. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, uh, I'll take the question. Yeah, I was wondering how long these um, these students stay with you, like on this podcast. Is it like a year thing, or are you going to continue with, say, DJ Gossip? Yeah. Um, have you, you thought about that? That's yeah. such a good question, man. That's such a good question. I mean, like, we're really, we're really building the plane as we fly it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like trying to figure it out. And that's been a big shift for me is like, okay, what's the big vision, right? Uh, uh, I, I've been thinking about like being really project-based. So it's like, okay, what does this mean? Um, so a few things on that. One is like, what's the pipeline for kids to join the radio? Uh, we've started to think more is like, if we have this kind of wide net of camp, we get 100 kids every summer to come along and kind of learn the basics, but also just like get in the culture a little bit. Then we provide that opportunity to 20 of them to be part of the year long radio program. Right. And that's open to fifth through seventh graders. Um, the big thing to me, I'm thinking is like, do we make that virtual next year? No kid wants to do virtual programming if they don't have to. But there's been so many positives to kids doing it. We have kids from different schools coming together like like that. That's powerful. So I'm really in the throes of that. Like, what do we do? Um, but another you know thing- we do, been... you get a Be Loud West Coast. Yeah. That's <laughs> or like, what we need. Uh, uh, okay. Um, but uh, to your question, Pug Love, love that name, by the way. Um, we've also been thinking about like, okay, Byron is aging out a little bit, right? DJ Gossip is going to be in eighth grade. He's going to be in high school. So one really exciting, he actually emailed me a couple of days ago and was like, I want to come to camp, but I want to be a coach, right? And it's like, cool, there is that natural progression for a kid who knows these skills really well to then teach those skills. So we'll be playing with that in the summer. And then maybe I'm hiring Byron, right? Maybe I'm hiring Vernell, right? 
Um, so that's something I'm really excited about. And also my last thing is just like, it's not just about Be Loud. What I'm really excited about is in the city of New Orleans, there is a group of organizations coming together and being like, how do we get youth to tell their own stories? So Lead New Orleans is an amazing organization that does this. A26 is an amazing organization that does this. Um, even groups like the Electric Girls, which does STEM with girls. And we're getting together and being like, cool. If a kid, oh, J.R. Nola is another one. If a kid enters Be Loud in third grade, leaves in seventh grade, then eighth grade does junior journalism with Nola, uh, J.R. Nola, gets the writing. And then in college does lead. Then by the time they're 25, they've done these three programs that are like-minded and care about them, but also could get them a job at the end. Um, so it's not like, how do we extend b -Lab? As much as I'm thinking about that, it's like, it's not about us going on forever. It's about us working with organizations to pass the torch, pass the mic, pass the, the DJ, right? Sorry, you asked a simple question and like my, you know, I gave like a really like complicated answer, but. No, um, no, it's it's good. Um, I was just thinking it is, it, it has to be like something that, that you've been thinking about. So I figured it, it'd be like a nice thick answer there. Thank yeah. you. It, it's what funders want to see too, right? When we're looking for funding, whether we're writing grants or whether I'm asking for sponsorships um, is they want to know, you know, I get, the, I get asked this all the time and I used to get kind of like, angsty about it when people would be like what's a 20 what, what's the impact of a student in 20 years i'd be like I, I don't know right like i just want them to like feel cool now you know and like i could bullshit you about like how they'll be xyz because they did this radio program but I, that doesn't feel right to me um but i do think there is a practical network that local communities could be building for youth now i'm excited about that so i see interest here so this is where um you all work on your credential, right, Ricky? You finish, and then we will uh, all come together, and we're gonna have a Be Loud West Coast, and we're gonna get with our organization of the Children's Museum and every other resource around us. Or, and we're gonna or this out. Yeah. Or call it your own thing. You know, like it doesn't gotta be Be Loud West Coast, right? Like I just I like Be Loud. I like that. <laughs> You know, I, I just talked to a really awesome, like I'm getting teachers from around the country who are, are writing me a little bit, which is cool. Like I'm finally like, oh yeah, 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 this is cool. And like this one from Arizona was like, I, I'm starting a podcast with my gifted and talented group, right? Like, how do, and it's just like, this is the thing that's really cool. It's just like, we can share resources. We can share content. My kids can listen to what your kids are doing, right? And like, again, like perspective and empathy could be built. For example, the educator out of Detroit um, we're doing, uh, he, he did the D turn it up or turn it down, uh, where he plays music and then kids respond to it. We're not only going to do an episode where some of his kids show, uh, play Detroit based music. My kids play New Orleans based music, but we're also doing an intergenerational episode where what happens if a 75 year old grandmother shares a song that mattered to her when she was 10 and our 10 year olds are playing songs that matter to them when they're 10. And, and like, how can we, uh, you know, do that? And, and Zoom makes that possible, right? In weird ways, so. I have a question about editing. Like, how do you learn how to edit? Oh man, yeah, that, that's a big question. So uh, another person in our fellowship is, uh, he comes from a music engineering background and he makes amazing stuff at a school called New Harmony High. But I was talking to him and he always gets bogged down by the editing. Um, and so, He's like, I'm always finding myself editing and I try to teach two or three kids to edit, but that's a lot of work. And then I'm stuck editing in them and I've been in that spot. Um, so if you're really serious, uh, it's um, the first thing I would say is like pushing as much of the front end editing on kids as possible, learning soundtrack. The more they can tweak themselves, get their volumes right, clip it at the right part, right? So it's not just like one time, because 80% of the stuff that kids are going to record are going to be like on their phone and you can't hear them. So the more you can push editing to the, to, on the kids using a tool like Soundtrap, the better. I use GarageBand just because that's what I started getting used to. Um, and that's where I, I, I call it compiling, for lack of a better term. So I'm going to take all your clips, listen to them, download the best eight, and then I just put them in GarageBand. Um, but there are a million different sites that you can use. Audacity is one of them. 
Um, but if you're someone who's like, I want to edit, uh, there is a learning curve with that for sure. So speaking of the learning curve, uh, my question is, do you think it's better to try to learn like the tools as best as possible before even like thinking about starting to see if you can even start it or to just like try to learn the tools with the kids because you just yeah. want to get it going? That's a great question. Uh, I, I would ask two questions of you. First is just like, uh, what age of kids do you work with? Um, the kids I, I'm hoping to work with are third through fifth graders. Okay, cool. And uh, what is your like, uh, what, how much capacity do you have to learn, you know? Um, in my personal opinion, I think if I really wanna do it, I have like, I, I'll always have the capacity to learn. Like as long as I feel like I want to make the effort to do it if I'm really passionate to try to start it, then there's always gonna be the capacity to learn how to do it. I'm pretty tech savvy for the most part. I pick up programs pretty easily because of previous experiences in school. So I feel like it's not so much a problem on my end. I'm just curious if like, it's better to go through that experience with the kids or to try to figure it out. Because like, if it's gonna make it more messy if I try to figure it out with them. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, good. I, uh, I, I think it's kind of age appropriate, right? Type of stuff, right? If I'm doing first graders, I'm not gonna go, okay, first graders, even though I have done this, like open up GarageBand and start editing right? Like it does get messy. It's really hard. Um, I think you wouldn't give a book to a kid to learn about if you haven't read the book, right? So there is a little bit of front loading where you're just like, cool, I'm going to do this prompt. I'm going to figure out what this looks like to download this thing, put it in. Um, but this is where like KISS comes in, right? It's just like your first project should be so simple. Like I'm talking about Legos, right? Where you literally are just taking files, renaming them, and just putting them in one, like compiling them, and then that's it, walk away from that, you know? Um, and then consistently, as you start to do it more, not only will you naturally learn skills like, oh, how do I fade in and out? How do I put a song in? How do I do sound effects, right? But you can also start posing those questions to kids, uh, and then you'll start seeing which kids are really taking to it. So if that group of fourth graders, there's like two or three kids, like an Oscar, who like, you can see them trying to get it right. It's like, yo, Oscar, why don't you stay in for a recess today? Uh, or why don't you stay in for lunch? And like, let's figure out how to do this together. And then Oscar can go in. I will say, um, I tried to push editing onto kids too soon. And it was like a disaster because I was over relying on them to do work that actually I needed to do. And that's that last kind of chunk. And I, I think teachers should really be owning that first. Uh, and then figuring out how to create that system for kids. Okay, thank you. That helps a lot. Yeah. I, I would say that the hardest thing too, um, and again, I'm, I'm kind of rambling, but it, it's not the actual editing, like the trimming or the cutting, the splicing. It's the organization of files, right? can be really hard for kids. The naming of files, right? It, it's the same way about like turning in your homework right? Like if you just told a kid to like, all right, go out to everyone and collect all the homework, you know, you turn your back and then all the homework's like in a crazy drawer and you didn't know where it was and, and one kid didn't get in on time. So you have to be really like explicit and you have to have a really clear system for how you're doing that first. So. Hey, Alex, can I just share real quick? Um, I'm just, I've been, you passed the mic on to me. I've been working with some, a second grade class on a project then and now, and they're doing some interviewing with um, their, um, you know, an older family member. Um, and what the teachers thought, because this was so brand new to them as well, um, the teachers cr created a Google slide um, that will be put in the kids' uh, Google classroom. So automatic copy is going to happen. They just have to take a selfie with the person pop in the image in the slide, and then they're gonna put the speak pipe link in the slide. So, and then uh, we, we will have a share out, um, but that was like very low entry, low barrier for teachers. There was no editing. Um, so, and I think that's just a great way to start it as far as like adding the music. Yes, I know like some of them wanted to add music and like, well, maybe you play around with just having some on your phone for right now until, you know, people can 
um, play with tools or, or learn how to add the transitions or the, you know, segues and, and things of that sort. Um, can, one thing can, I I also, can I also jump in too, like with uh, groups that old or groups that young, right? Things like Class Dojo, things like Seesaw, right? Like if they're just recording in Seesaw and then like you just can play that Seesaw recording, right? And like something with like third graders, especially is like, how are you make believing radio, right? Like, I don't like to do kids, but I'll be like, yo, it's radio minute, right? It's time to get on the radio and I'll like the spirit of it. And I might just give a mic, right? Like we used to get these sound booths for kids. Um, they don't work. They're not great. They're not going to like trap sound in a clouded classroom, but kids thought when they went in the corner and they sat in this, they were on the radio, right? And so like, it's a mindset thing. Um, and I love that Christian about just like, you know, it doesn't even have to be compiled or edited at all. You could just play the raw like recording. And as long as you dress it up with the right energy um, and get kids listening to it, uh, that counts, right? That's important. That's where you start. So I put in the chat also NPR has um, like competitions, podcasting competitions for kids. Um, the teachers that I just was working with in the second grade classroom found this um, teaching podcasting curriculum guide for educators very helpful. And there's also, um, so I played a lot of um, Be Loud's examples for the students so that they learned about intro, outro, the content, how it sounded, clarity, voice, fluency. Um, we also wrote scripts so that they could practice and they practiced um, with SpeakPipe. But um, the, there are some other NPR podcasts that you can use that are embedded in this curriculum guide like um, with children's voices. Um, one was about uh, a kid who can't eat chocolate because he has diabetes, you know? So I think um, I, I, but like I said, I used a lot of Alex's work with the kiddos to model. Um, but I think this also gives you a good, in, a good indication of like the step-by-step. -step. And again, this is for the competition, but you can just use it as a resource. Wow, I like this a lot. This is awesome. It's like you can, yeah, really use this as like, yeah, like you said, like a step by step, because that's kind of something I was wondering a little more, you know, how to introduce the podcast to students. And, but I really like the idea of setting up that booth, getting them in the mindset and having that maybe a, you know, 30 minutes a day or something or a certain time a week because in the classroom you know we're especially right now we're so crunched on time it's so hard to incorporate these fun um things into the classroom but if you you know make it special like that and you have a, a lot of time i think that would it'd be a really good way to execute it yeah and will had we been in person you all would have been doing this this week um i from alex i i got soundboards i got microphones we would have been doing it in class you know mm -hmm. um and i think too it's just a um yeah like that imaginary i i call it the imaginary podcast community you know like um it was so empowering empowering for me to watch alex create this um like yeah radio station no you're sitting at a desk with the soundboard and a microphone but the output from the kiddos was just um, so amazing. So amazing. So. Yeah, th this resource is really good. And I would say uh, DJ Dreamweaver too, like uh, my strength is not <laughs> uh, curriculum. Uh, it's also like oftentimes, like I'm just throwing stuff at kids. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it also gets back to just like this idea of what's, what's your goal, right? Um, and Early on, we thought we were going to make this an intervention strategy, a, a box, you know, something that maybe teachers could use. And then I realized like, A, that's not my strength and B, that's not our ultimate goal, right? And it's just like, I think it's like just good teaching applies to good radio making with kids, right? Like, how are you just building a culture um, and how do you apply that uh, through a radio lens? I think that's like the most important thing. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um... Yeah, I, and I love the way you you did the presentation today. You laid it out for us so we can you know use it however we you know whatever fits in our you know classroom or yeah, cool. So, well, thank you, Alex, so much. That was an awesome presentation. I enjoyed it a lot.
and uh, have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Peace out. Bye. Yep, yeah, we got about two minutes left. Um, so, is there are there any other questions for Alex? What kinds of kids are not interested in podcasting? Yeah, that's a great question. Not every kid is, you know. Um, you know, this isn't like a one size fits or you know what I mean. It's not like a, a golden bullet, right? Um, so there are a lot of kids that I've done this with. They were like, "Nah, I don't want to do this." Uh, you it's hard to force on kids. Right. Um, but I do think it, like it applies to every kid has something to say, right. Every kid does want to be heard and every kid has interests that they want to share. So again, like I don't, you, if you step into my classroom, I don't use podcasts very often, right. Kids don't think podcasting is cool. You know what I mean? Like, especially a third grader, they're not like, Oh yeah, I want to make a pot. Like, so I, I try not to use that word. Um, and more, I, I use words like I do use word radio, but I also use, um, you know, just like being loud, expressing yourself, like creative, what do you got to say, um, and posing it towards that. Um, I will say, though, two things about it. One, if you make the project simple enough, and it's just simple call and response, kids will, like this Black Lives Matter prompt that we did with the school, I knew most of the kids that responded from teaching them, and there were certain kids that I could not believe brought such energy to the recording. So you, you don't wanna over underestimate kids based on maybe traditional academic performance. Like, oh, I know that kid's a good reader or writer, right? Like some kids just like step up on the mic in a way that you didn't think was possible, um, which is really, really cool. The second thing is um, there are kids, I would say half our kids never thought they would be on the radio um, Oscar included, they're very shy kids. So they're not necessarily like behavior issues, right? But they're just kids that like don't speak up much and they're really, really shy. And they're going to be really shy when they start. Oscar did not want anyone to hear his work for a long time, right? I have a DJ right now who I've been working with for six months. He does not want to share his voice. And so you have to kind of encourage them and bring them along and be as positive and celebratory as possible, especially when they're this young. Um, someone asked about uh, commercials. Yes, 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 we have done that. We also this week are recording commercials for our favorite local businesses. So someone asked about audiences. Um, we're, we're going to record commercials for the places that we love in New Orleans. And then we're going to send those specifically to those places for them to share, right? Uh, so that's a really easy prompt. Um, but yeah, we've had kids make uh, Be Loud commercials uh, or uh, like episode commercials before. It's really cool. Okay, that's great because I, I did that as a middle schooler. <laughs> and yeah. I remember it was so much fun. And yeah, it's, so, a, it's super fun, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's like when you tell them to sell something. Yeah. Right? It's really <laughs> fun. Um, and then they have to learn the time slot in which they have to do it. And yes, timing and all of that. Yeah, timing is really important. It's also like, take that gossip piece, the, the first piece I played, the kid had never written a script before, but he knew what radio sounds like, right? Like he's listened to commercials in the car. They have this like, you know, media relevancy that they think about. Um, and so like them just really like tapping in. Pay attention. They start yes. to pay attention to what, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. That's cool. That's really, really cool. So one more question, no more questions. Yeah, we're at time. So cool. um, thank you everyone for coming today. Really, really appreciate it. Really awesome resources, Alex, and, and really appreciate your time um, on a Saturday afternoon <laughs> to, to help us learn and passing the mic on to us. So very grateful. So thank you so much. That was very inspiring. Good. Yeah. Appreciate it. And, and email me if you have any questions or you just want to talk about how this directly applies. I'm always willing to get on the phone. Awesome. Peace out, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you all. Thank you, Norma. Great, great question. Okay. You're welcome. I thought we had some more time. I thought we had like another 25 minutes left. That's why I asked the question at that moment yeah, and yeah. not prior to. No, but thank you. Incredible. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for all that. Thank you, Norma. Thank you. Thank you. Hug love. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Sure. Bye.
Cardi 